So welcome back guys. Today is January the 29th and it is around 60 to 65 degrees and I know a lot of y'all are still covered up in snow right now but it's actually pretty nice where I am and today seems to be a pretty decent day to get into these hives and do some winter hive maintenance. Some of these hives, some of the wooden wear is starting to rot. A couple of the hives are starting to lean a little bit. So I want to get into these hives, replace some of the wooden wear and I also want to check on the status of what's going on inside of the hives. I want to make sure they've got enough honey stores that they're not in danger of starving to death this is the time of year where they're going to start building up for the spring honey flow laying lots of eggs lots of brood to feed so i want to make sure that they're good on their stores as well we'll also look for signs for uh, signs of disease and we'll just kind of do a general glance on everything and make sure everything's looking good inside of the hives i want to show y'all first how you can tell what's going on inside of your hives and kind of the general health of your hives by not even going into the hives by what What's going on outside of the hives uh, before you have to go into it and uh, do a very thorough inspection. So of course the most obvious thing to look for is are there bees coming in and out of the hive? If there aren't bees going in and out of the hive in the first place, you know you've probably got some serious problems going on. This is some of the wooden ware right here that I was talking about. Not looking so good there. And I'm happy to say that all five of my hives have bees coming in and going out and there's a decent amount of activity at all of the hives. Another important thing to look at once you see bees going in and out is what are they doing? Is there a lot of bees? Are they bringing stuff in or are they just kind of wandering aimlessly about the front of the hive? If we look at these bees really close, we can see the bees that are coming in have got pollen in their pollen baskets. If you've got a lot of bees going in and out and they're carrying pollen in their pollen baskets like this, that's a really good sign that you've got a healthy hive. Number one, you've got a lot of bees. And number two, they are bringing pollen back as a protein supplement for brood rearing. So that's a really good sign. It also shows that there's probably a queen in there who's releasing pheromones to keep the order of the hive as it should be. Now, if the weather in your area has been decent enough for your bees to be flying around and you don't see any pollen coming back in, there's probably no need to panic. As long as you have healthy bees, there's probably no need to panic because all beekeeping is local. What's true in my area, we live in Georgia, what's true in my area is probably not true in your area. There's pollen available here and there may not be pollen available for bees that live in say Pennsylvania or Maine or California or anywhere like that. So keep in mind that it's not, it's not necessarily a problem if your bees are not bringing things in. Again. Now, I'm not sure how the bees are going to react to this. It's not always easy doing this in the wintertime when temperatures are still kind of this low. But I'm hoping that since they've got something to do outside of the hive, that maybe they'll be occupied enough not to get all fussy about it. Ooh. But I've got to handle them right. That's pretty important too. So I want to check on their food stores and a real quick and easy way to do that is just kind of feel the weight of the boxes. So this box 
it's pretty light, so let's check the next box. I think I'm smelling smelling some goldenrod honey in there, which should have been the last nectar they gathered. When I extracted these hives, oh gosh, when I extracted these hives last year, I was careful to leave them enough for the winter, so I'm hoping that they've got enough. I can see from here that they've got some, but I don't know how much. They're being nice so far, I'm trying to be as gentle as I can here. All right, so y'all check that out. That is a frame full of honey right there. That is a wonderful, wonderful frame of honey. Mm -hmm. I probably won't uncap any more honey because when you do that this time of year, it can trigger a robbing response from other hives because there's nothing coming in right now as far as honey goes. And naturally the other bees would like some honey this time of year. So we don't want to create a robbing situation, which probably means I need to move a little bit faster too. Oh, that's very heavy. That's good. Oh, they're getting mad. I don't blame them. They've got tons of honey in this box as well. I'm gonna go straight to this bottom box and see if I can get it replaced. I wanted to see their brood situation, but they're starting to get irritated. I can see brood from here, that's a good sign. So I wanna take these frames from this bottom box and transfer them to this nice new box, or at least the box is in better shape. And the quickest way to do that is just gonna be to pull this rotten box apart. If I'm lucky, I can transfer all 10 of these frames as one unit. <sighs> Maybe two units. I was able to do that, transfer those as two like, kind of wads of frames because of this stuff right here. This is propolis and it's what the bees really plug cracks in their hives with. They glue their frames together. So uh, it's just resin from trees. I see them gathering it from sweet gum trees a lot. Something else is pretty important when you put the hives back together, it's important to put them back in the same order that the bees had them in the first place. So that's why I had them lined out on the ground so that I'd remember what went where. You also may have noticed that when I came back to put that new box down on the bottom, I had two boxes here. Well, that box that I replaced, it was replacing the one that was on the bottom. I stuck two boxes back up there while I was transferring the frames. And the reason that I did that is because while I'm working, bees are still coming back constantly. And if they get here and they don't have any place to go, that's liable to make them even angrier than I had already made them. So that's kind of what I was, that's kind of why I put those two there. So that they'd have some place to go and they wouldn't get super angry about it. This white box here does need replacing, but they're just a little bit too irritable to deal with it now, but it does have a little bit of life left in it. Here's our next box here. And I want to see if we can get this box replaced because it is rotting from the top right there. Maybe this one too, we'll see how they act. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can get this one replaced.
That is a frame full of good honey. That one's loaded, that one's loaded, that one, that one, that one, that one. That one may have, that one's got some in it too, I think. Lots of honey in this box. One of the things that I'm looking for on these bees as I'm going through this hive, it, they don't like breath, so they're kind of getting buzzy right here a little mm -hmm. bit. But one of the things that I'm looking for is deformed wing syndrome, deformed wing virus, DMV. So basically what that is, is it's a disease that's present in every single hive, but if you've got an overload of varroa mites, you're gonna have a lot of bees with, D, sorry, DWV, deformed wing virus. You're gonna have a lot of bees that have really shriveled, messed up looking wings, and I'm not seeing any bees with those kinds of wings. So that's really good. Now I'm not doing a proper mite check on these bees. A proper mite check would be a sugar shake or an alcohol wash or something like that. I did some really good oxalic acid treatments back in the late fall and it looks like they're paying off. This is a very, very healthy beehive. This one may not go as smooth as the last. There's some brood in here so they may be a little more defensive about this box. Another thing I'm doing here is I'm moving away from the main hive when I do this so that when the bees come out of here, they'll go back to the hive, hopefully, instead of hanging around right here. So this is kind of interesting right here, if you want to call it that. I just found what I believe is either a wax moth, it should be a wax moth larva. Wish I was close to the chickens. That's a wax moth, wax moth larva right there. Now that doesn't mean that this hive is infested. What it means is that they found a pretty clever hiding place right in here and uh, managed to hatch one out. With this amount of bees in this box, there's no way that they would have taken over though. Also trying to put these in the same order that they're coming out because the bees put this in put them put them in this order for a purpose. I'm gonna pull some of these apart because I want y'all to see the brood in this box. I need to be super careful here because it's possible there's a queen here. So look at this right here. You've got a really nice kind of a rainbow pattern of brood right there. All this in the middle um, is brood that's already been hatched out and she's already relayed eggs down in there i don't think i'll be able to get y'all to see it with this camera but if y'all could see it there's a little larva down in those cells in the middle same story on this side very healthy i think there's a bee crawling up my pants leg that's not ideal So in this box especially, I want to make sure that the queen is not anywhere in some of these boards here, box pieces that I took apart because she could be. There's a lot of activity, a lot of brood activity in that box. And I'm just tapping them like this so that they'll scatter around a little bit.
here's the next one and this is probably one that i could skip but i still want to make sure that they've got enough stores that they're not in danger of starving to death and it looks like this lid has seen better days too so we at least need to replace the lid it seems to me that the population of this hive isn't quite as impressive as the other ones but i could be wrong There's some in there. So I didn't think I was gonna have to replace a box on this one, but if y'all can see this, you can see that this uh, box, so these frames here have pulled off of this ledge right here. And uh, that's probably gonna create some issues for down below. I don't know how tough this is gonna be to get out and how much I'm gonna disturb these things. It's a shame, that's a pretty nice box otherwise. Yeah. Okay, so they've got a lot of honey stores in this box, so that's good, and they've got population. I was getting concerned about them because there wasn't as much or not as many bees as the other two hives, and I'll tell you in a minute why I think that is, but here's the next box, and you can see that they have crossed combed, whoops, here we go, cross combed the mess out of, the, out of, these, out of these frames right here, and uh, that's something that you really should fix, not this time of year, because it would create too big of a mess that the bees wouldn't be able to fix because they can't bring any, uh, any sugar or any nectar back right now to make more comb. But this is something that should be fixed because it makes it impossible to inspect your hives properly. But um, actually looks like this entire box here is cross combed. Let's pull this box off and see what else is going on in here. Oh. Here's the next box, and we've got the same exact problem going on over here. Those frames are off of that shelf right there, that ridge right there, and same on that side. So while I've got this open, I'll go ahead and replace that box. So of course, after I took all those pains to get that in, in one piece, I had to look at the brood and the brood's looking really good. There are eggs in there. That tells me I've got a good laying queen. Uh, it's a solid pattern and there's not as many bees in this box as we've been seeing in the other ones, but I'll tell you why that is in just a minute. They're looking great, no disease. Um, very, very happy with the way this one's looking. Here's that cross comb that I was telling you all about earlier. Basically, it's a matter of I didn't put foundation in those frames and they just did what they wanted to. This is the other box that was messed up and I swapped the frames to a new box on this one as well. Here's the next one. This one is pretty well rotten. This one is actually causing the whole thing from here on up to kind of lean a little. So that's pretty sketchy. I'd like to replace this one as well. So let's see if we can do that. Here's the next one and thankfully the last one. Uh, this, the bottom board on this one is just destroyed, very, very rotten. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this. The, the biggest issue with this is that I have to take the entire thing down in order to just replace this one piece, but this is the only piece we're gonna replace on this one. Mm -hmm. 
hope they're gonna let me sit this close to them after all of that. I kind of irrit irritate. Oh, they're not gonna let me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move. I still got one on my shoulder here. All right, so there's a couple things. I think they'll let me stand right here and talk, but there was a couple things that I wanted to mention before I end this video. Uh, number one, this is really not the time of year to do this. Best bet would have been late fall, right around the time I did my mite treatments on these bees, but that's not when I did it. Uh, in this time of year, I start getting really, really nervous about the amount of honey stores that these bees have available to get them through the spring. I'll probably end up having to do supplemental feeding anyways, but when I get to this point in the wintertime, I, I'll find myself at night thinking, oh boy, I hope the bees have got enough honey to make it through this freezing weather or whatever. So I really wanted to get in these hives to check on the honey stores, and I'm very happy to report that they all are in really, really good shape. Some better than others, but for the most part, they're all in really nice shape as far as honey goes. The queens are starting to lay eggs for the spring buildup. Uh, I was able to see brood in four out of the five hives, and one of them I just, I didn't want to they were getting real testy so i really didn't want to mess with it but this is really not the year time of year to be doing this kind of stuff because there's not a lot for them to do the weather's a little bit cooler uh, and they do get a little bit irritated at you um definitely don't do it when it gets colder than 55 it's about 57 right now and i'm finished uh, once it starts getting below 55 the bees stop flying and uh, at some point as the temperature gets lower they go into cluster and you don't want to break that cluster whatever you do because once they get out of cluster they can't get back into cluster and there's a good chance you're going to kill a lot of bees doing that so uh, if you can find some 60 65 degree weather in the winter you can work them if you have to but your best bet is to do all this maintenance stuff during the fall but if you get worried about your stores, get in there, check them. Oh, man. Dive bomber. Get in there, check them, or you can just measure the weight of the hives, or you can just kind of crack the hives and look in and, uh, and try to see if there's some honey stores in there. So uh, there are better ways to do this, but this is just the way that I did it. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to talk about is that one hive that had the large, the very small cluster of bees that I was mm -hmm. talking about was uh, i'm pretty confident that is in fact i'm sure those are the bees that i pulled out of the cedar tree about seven miles south of here two years ago and i have a video on that i'll put a little tag up here about that but uh, those are just basically feral bees they're survivor bees they've probably been living in the wild since um since they brought the things over since they brought italian bees over uh, so many so many decades ago so they're just really suited as survivor bees they make a smaller cluster they don't eat up as much honey during the winter time and they just keep going year after year they're they probably got a good degree of mite resistance as well these other boxes are commercial bees probably rossman apiaries and maybe some mixed genetics with some mutt wild bees around here uh, more suited for a very fast and rapid spring buildup and honey production so that they can make honey and they can sell packages not finding fault there that's just kind of how commercial bees are bred to make lots and lots of honey um what else did i want to talk about uh I may get some comments about this. Uh, my honey supers stay on year round. And the reason for that is, well, there's a few reasons. Uh, number one, I'd really don't like to take them off. It's kind of a hassle. Uh, another reason is I don't really have a place to store them. If I put them somewhere to store them, I would have to put paramoth in there to keep the wax moths out. And I don't want to do that either. Uh, and while they're on the hives and the hive is strong they're they're protected i've been doing this for years and as long as the hive is strong they're fine uh, when the bees go into cluster during very cold temperatures and those boxes are unprotected it doesn't matter because it's so cold there's not any pests that are going to be messing around in those boxes anyway so it works out really well and i've been doing this for years and i had very little problems out of it. as long as you got good strong boxes you should be fine there. I'm also probably going to get some comments about not wearing gloves. I seem to always get comments about that on my bee videos. I don't wear gloves if I could help it. Today probably would have been the day to wear gloves if I decided to wear gloves. But I don't wear gloves and I don't do that because of dexterity. Uh, it's easier to work the hives. It's easier to get in little small places and get the frames out of those boxes without any gloves on. Uh, and you don't knock the thing around so much. It's not as clumsy. So the bees, the theoretically should stay much calmer but that's the reason that I don't wear gloves but I did get stung quite a few times I probably took 
probably 15 or more stings just because they're just so testy today but anyways that is going to do it for this video i really appreciate you watching i hope you found this video at least a little bit entertaining and informative and i will see y'all on the next one there's a bee up my shirt now yikes oh get out of here that one's already stung me once you can't do anything else